All right, welcome to the Genesee County Compassion Club show. Uh, this week, uh, Jeremy is out of town on vacation, and I'm sitting in hosting for him. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, would like to uh, thank a few of our. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank John and the Flint Talk Radio Studios for... Uh, all points, all points. <laughs> oh, yes, okay, yeah. okay. There you go, uh, for uh, hosting this. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate John working back there behind the scenes. And we're having a good time. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to bring you some uh, uh, up-to-dates on the club and what's going on there. I'm at the uh, club website right now on the Facebook, actually. And if you, in case you didn't already know... The club offers uh, smoothies and salads, and juices and sandwiches. Wow, really cool stuff. I'm up. Wow, I am definitely gonna have to go to the club after this and check all this stuff out. <laughs> but um, no, we're gonna try to get to some topics today, uh, for, such as uh, oh, we got the upcoming uh, 420. That's uh, the 420 party at the Jesse County Compassion Club show, or excuse me, the Compassion Club, the sixth annual. 420 celebration, Monday, April 20th, starting at 10 a.m. And in case any of you have not been to the Genesee County Compassion, uh, Compassion Club on 420, their 420 uh, anniversary uh, celebration, it is phenomenal. It is such a, uh, it is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. I, it's almost words can't describe. But if you go to their Facebook page, Genesee County C Compassion Club on Facebook, they have photographs from the previous year's uh, 420 parties, and you can get an idea of what that's like and what that's all about. Uh, the regular... Well, I don't know if they'll have vending that day. I'm not sure. But um, that is a... Uh, it is qu The event, the 420 party, which I'm actually wearing the shirt right now of the uh, last year's event, I believe. Yes. Yep, 2014. So you can, you can pick up a t-shirt like that. I'm sure they'll have some special ones this year, probably a little different than the one I'm wearing. And I'm sure it will be a great time. The, uh, the club really offers, in case you've never been to the club at all, the Jesse County Compassion Club, it is, a, it is a, a, a beautiful club, very spacious. You're not crowded in there. It's a lot of, a lot of room, gorgeous bathrooms. Uh, the place is just really, really nice. I enjoy going there. Uh, any day that they're open and just um, being in the environment, being a, surrounded by people that are like-minded like we are, uh, that enjoy cannabis and, that, uh, and, and patients and caregivers alike. And if you're a patient and you're looking for a caregiver or you don't have one, the Jesse County Compassion Club is an excellent source of a location to go and possibly meet a caregiver that can help you and, and meet your needs. But back to the 420 party, they have had some incredible events. I don't know all what they're going to have this year, but they're going to have some good stuff, uh, no doubt about it. They're going to have, uh, I know there's uh, contests. Uh, there's going to be um, uh, potency contests. There will be uh, rolling uh, contests. There will be most exotic uh, rolls, uh, fastest rolls, uh, a lot of cool competitions. Everybody gets really into that. I know there will be some uh, new competitors this year as well as some veterans that are going to be trying to hold their title. So uh, I've, I've been to almost every, I think almost every single one for the past six that they've had. And I just know that it's an intense moment when you get a competition out there and people are just, you know, geeked and ready to just throw down and, and roll a, 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 a nice roll joint. And uh, to see people roll it as fast as they do, I don't, I don't remember how many seconds uh, that they do this in, but it's like so quick and... Uh, it's really remarkable. I, I could never roll that fast or, or that well but uh, to enter a contest, but it's uh, always fun to watch. And they give out trophies and, and, and awards, and you get your picture taken, and, and you get that, that, uh, that positive vibe from everybody who just, you know, uh, totally respects what you're doing. You're going to see a lot of exotic things at the club. Uh, they usually have it decorated for the party. Oftentimes, uh, people are, you know, taking their, uh, taking their, their caregivership to a whole new level to show you some uh, of, the, of the industry's nuances and, and just lots of fun stuff. I know uh, my uh, patient of mine enjoys going there and, and having a good time with it every year. I'm absolutely certain that uh, they will come back. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the Genesee County Compassion Club, check it out. And if you've never been to a 420 celebration party uh, at 
the G3C, definitely check it out. It is a really, really awesome uh, and incredible uh, time. So looking forward to that. And, and uh, just for everyone tuning in, that is the sixth annual 420 celebration, Monday, April 20th at 10 a.m., starting at 10 a.m. And it'll go on all day, I'm sure. It'll probably go on until quite, quite uh, late in the afternoon anyway. Uh, other than that, uh, let's see if there's any other announcements. Uh, checking the website here. They've certainly... Oh, the G3C's Adopt-A-Highway this year will be Saturday, April 12th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sign up or check in the Education Center. And you're going to all basically meet at the Genesee County Compassion Club and carpool to M13 uh, Adopt a Highway. And it, uh, that's really a fun event. Um, you know, it really, the, uh, it's been a big annual event for the G3C every single year. Uh, it's a way to give back to the community. It's a way to get out there and, and with your brothers and sisters of the, of the, of the cannabis community. And demonstrate that we're not lazy and that we, uh, we care about the environment too. So I think it's an important thing uh, to be a part of. If you're a member of the club or if you want to join the club or just go for the, the uh, cleanup day, come on down to the Genesee County Compassion Club April 12th. That's Saturday, April 12th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And they often serve food when you get back to the Genesee County Compassion Club. I'm sure they do that every year. Um, so it's, um, it's really, really a fun event. Try to make it out there if you can. There are some other uh, news. I won't get into too much detail about the, uh, the ballot initiatives. There are some upcoming ballot initiatives. Uh, mainly one I'm really uh, mostly only concerned, or, or not concerned, but really uh, looking forward to. And that is the uh, possible ballot initiative to uh, legalize marijuana for everyone 21 years and older and still maintain the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act and its integrity, its entirety, and also to um, provide everyone the legal avenue to uh, be able to, you know, have uh, plant and cultivation possession of up to 12 plants, as, as I've been told up till now. I haven't actually seen this in writing, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but uh, we're definitely looking, I'm looking forward to seeing that legislation uh, come forth. I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the language on that and seeing what that's all about. And if you need to know more about that, I'll see if I can find the contact for that. But, um, yep, it's, it definitely is uh, a good thing. You know, something I wanted to point out is that uh, um, a new study done by JAMA International Medicine, inter oh, JAMA Internal Medicine, August 2014. A new study found that the 13 U.S. states that have legalized medical marijuana have seen prescription painkiller overdoses drop by 25%. I think, you know, whether the 25% is an accurate statistic or not, uh, I think that what I would... In, in my own experience from what I've seen, uh, I believe that is a very, uh, at least um, somewhat accurate uh, statistic uh, based on in my own experience. So I think that that's very plausible. I don't know how the, the survey or whatever was conducted by the JAMA Internet Internal Medicine, but obviously that uh, it, I believe that the study seems to be pretty much in line with what I uh, have recognized in my own experience. I, I've actually lost uh, two friends to overdoses on heroin, so it is, it's, it's a very real thing for me and, uh, and, a, and a real experience uh, that I've had in my life. So I, I know what that's all about, and I've, I'm very glad. I've actually helped uh, friends and family members as well as um, people I've just met uh, helped to reduce the amount of prescription medication that they consume uh, by being a caregiver for the individual. And that is a really good feeling when you really, when you help people. It's such a great feeling. I, I enjoy being a caregiver. Um, 
Uh, by the way, I forgot to introduce myself in case uh, many of you don't know. My name is Eric Gunnels, and I've been a caregiver since 2009, one of the uh, first probably 100 in the state, according to the news uh, that came out when I received my card. And I've been a caregiver and a, and a patient ever since, and I really enjoy the, I've just, it's, it's changed my life forever for the better. I think um, that in many ways, it's just been a, a positive influence in my life, and I, and I'm, I've never regretted it, and I've helped so many people, and that has brought a lot of joy into my life. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. And if you don't know anything about cannabis, uh, I suggest you do your research. Uh, most of the viewing audience probably does know about cannabis, but if you've never done it or never tried it, do some, re re do some research on it first. There's plenty of internet um, sites that'll take you and give you a walkthrough education about cannabis, as well as many documentaries. Uh, check them out as well. Uh, to name a few would be, uh, yeah, well, I, there's just so many to name. <laughs> I like them all. But uh, if many of you have not heard of or, have do, or do not fully understand what hash bash is, uh, I'd like to go on to that topic next. Um, hash bash is an annual event that takes place in Ann Arbor and it's coming up this Saturday so just a few days from now it's the, always the first Saturday in April and the history of hash bash is is really remarkable it's kind of a beautiful it's kind of a a, 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 um, a sad story but yet a beautiful story in the same uh, breath it all started with uh, the of course this will be the 44th hash bash this year and Hash Bash started with a man basically named John Sinclair. A man by the name of John Sinclair. And John Sinclair was arrested and thrown in jail for 10 years for two joints. That was his sentence. That was right after the narcotics law had passed uh, in the, uh, the, fe the form of the federal law in, I believe, 1971. I believe that's 71. And... That, since from that, John Sinclair was arrested and prosecuted, and it went to the Supreme Court of Michigan, and the Supreme Court of Michigan ruled that that was cruel and unusual punishment, and John Sinclair was released. But prior to that, John Lennon of the Beatles sang a song, wrote and sang a song called Ten for Two about John Sinclair. And that was a significant event it was very remarkable. It was historical. Uh, John Lennon being a very famous individual, um, really making the story. Of course, John Sinclair's story went made headlines as it was back in that in those days. And from that point, there was a there was a time. I as I understand, there was a time when the Supreme Court ruling came down, before the Michigan State Legislature adopted the Federal Narcotics Act as a part of state law. Prior to that adoption, cannabis or marijuana had been considered in some ways basically legal, even though it was illegal in the rest of the country, because the Michigan State Supreme Court had made a ruling on it that basically prevented police officers or prosecutors from prosecuting cases on marijuana because of that Supreme Court ruling, which could be cited by your defense attorney. Whether or not people were still arrested or not is probably obviously probably still were, but leading up to Hash Bash, the first, weekend in, the first weekend in April is when the event is whole, held, but it's the first week in April when the new laws are adopted for that year. And when the legislature adopted the Nar Federal Narcotics Act in the form of a state law, it became state law. And from that point on, Michigan was an illegal state. And for the rest, for the remainder of the time, up until you know, just recently in 2008, all forms of marijuana and cannabis have been illegal in Michigan, all for those many years. Then in 2000, well, but for that, for that many years though, for the last 44 years, Hash Bash has been the focal point for the entire state of Michigan, basically the largest 
the single largest um, it's the single largest political protest, if you will. Many people think that hash bash is the same as the Monroe Street Fair, which takes place the certain the same day, but the two are separate things. Uh, hash bash refers to the initial event that takes place at at the beginning of high noon at the Diag at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor, and that will be happening, of course, this Saturday. So don't miss it. If you have a chance to get out to the hash bash this year, go for it. It is an incredible event. Last year there were roughly 8,000 people. I'd say there was about 5,000 people in the crowd in front of the Diag, and roughly three to three to four thousand, you know, or those people have moved to the to the Monroe Street Fair, and that's what the, that's what the separation is. You have the initial event of Hash Bash, and then you have the Monroe Street Fair, which follows right afterwards. Which everybody, as soon as everybody clears the Diag, everybody congregates and makes their way two blocks south to the to the uh, Monroe Street Fair, where Consum open consumption of cannabis is more permitted and um, police harass people less for that. Be advised though, if you are on University of Michigan's campus that is federally funded and it is illegal to smoke cannabis there, very illegal. In fact, the law enforcement does a very good job of trying to police that area, the campus itself. And so if you're on even the lawn of the campus, you can and probably will be arrested for smoking marijuana if you're smoking. But, you know, keep it in your, if you're going to go to Hash Bash for the event, keep it on your person. If you're going to consume, try to do so in the safest manner possible. I know it's an open protest, but that's the very basis of what Hash Bash is. It is an open public protest in defiance of our government for unjust laws. And in the words of, um, one of our founding forefathers, Thomas Jefferson, it is for every man to obey the just laws and for every everyone to disobey the unjust laws. And I agree with that philosophy because whenever a government or a law becomes destructive of its means, it is the right and the will of the people to rise up and change that law and change that policy for the betterment of all people, for we the people's sake to build a better world. And in case I didn't mention earlier, which I did not, coming to mind now, I ran for public office in 2012 and won my election to my local township trustee position, where I still remain the trustee for a four-year term, ending in 2016, in which I will run again. And I entered into politics for this very reason, because I see the unjust laws of our nation, I see the the um, the inadequacies of the efficiency of our system, and I really that's what that's what the study of of economics is. Uh, the word, the very word, economy comes from the original translation to manage a household, and that's really what our system is all about. Where we all pay taxes to pay into the system, so that our tax money can be used for public services that help the public community. Uh, such as roads. That'd be probably primarily number one and probably where the most re of revenue needs to go. Uh, and then you have schools and then you have uh, fire departments, police departments, and other organizations and departments, obviously, that are all you know state and federally funded. So we utilize our tax money pooled together collectively for the better of all society. But as a policymaker on a, on a local small level myself, I have issue with things like uh, laws and policies that are either overreaching or do not serve an adequate purpose. If the law is irrelevant, in my opinion, a man-made law is simply a, a, an attempt to solve a technical problem where a, a technical solution needs to be reached or until a technical solution needs to be reached. And that's my philosophy about law. I mean, I'm sure many attorneys could uh, argue something different, but I'm not an attorney, and I'm just a, a layman kind of person. I, I look at the, the basic purpose of a law. Is it there? Is it helping us? Is it helping society as a whole? If it's not, let's re-examine it. 
let's go deeper into it. Let's adjust it, make changes. Uh, I don't think that um, necessarily changing laws all the time uh, needs to be a good idea or practice, but I certainly think that that reflecting and reviewing policy, um, especially in, in new terms, uh, that election terms is what I'm referring to, is, is important. I think it's important, and that's why I think it's important that we have elections and that uh, individuals like myself and hopefully individuals that are listening to this uh, program, uh, hopefully I can inspire you if you have inclinations or uh, desires to, to serve your community in a way of good decision-making on policy, then I recommend you enter into politics, uh, such as I did. And uh, it, it's a great feeling. It's a great sense of accomplishment. And, um, and, I, and I find that very fun. Um, maybe not fun all the time, it, challenging at times maybe, but I know that it's a great accomplishment for my community to have the confidence in me to be one of their elected leaders and to be a voice of representation to the people and to serve my community by being a leader and by, by being that person that has a, a rational ability to reflect on any old policy or any new policy suggested and hammer out the details and have a critical debate as to whether or not that policy is right for our society. And I think um, that I, I just I feel very honored to know that my community uh, supports me and, and respected me enough that they uh, believe I can make good decisions. And, uh, and it's, you know, I was elected, and you could say that I won the election, but, you know, my community chose me to be their duly elected representative and it's, it's, it's an honor and I just wanted to say that in case any of my community residents are listening. Um, thank you. And in the future I intend to run for higher public, uh, public offices. Uh, I don't necessarily want to disclose which ones yet, but I certainly do intend to run for higher offices in the future. I'm still quite young for politics yet, so I, have, uh, I look forward to a good many years uh, of, of running uh, in, in, uh, for public office. Uh, back to Hash Bash. Hash Bash is really a very, very political event. The initial event itself, when you meet at the Diag at high noon this Saturday and every first Saturday in April, that you'll get a sense of feeling from the, the magnitude of the crowd that is there, the display of everyone supporting the, the cannabis plant, uh, these beautiful cannabis plants. I think they're on the screen, aren't they, John? Yeah. <laughs> was, it's kind of interesting pointing to a green screen. It's like the first time I've ever had a chance to like point to a green screen and talk about it like I'm a weatherman or something. Instead, I'm reflecting on this beautiful, gorgeous plants and, and this beautiful outdoor garden. And um, yes, you can legally grow outdoors in Michigan. And for those of you that are ever interested or, or thought about it, uh, if you're going to grow outside in, 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 uh, with your medical marijuana uh, as a patient or a caregiver, make sure you do so by making sure that you're growing them in an enclosed, locked facility. That is the most important part about it, growing outside. Make sure, and I, you know, the, the exact wordings are ex, you know, enclosed, locked facility, but make sure it is a uh, s secure Make sure it's secure. It's what do we? What, for what example? For for what? For example, would be considered you know acceptable for the legal, you know the legal well, the, area. The legal, that. the legal interpretation, or the legal not interpretation, because I can't give you an interpretation because I'm not an attorney. But the legal words of the law states uh, must be enclosed on all sides, with the exception of the floor. And I think that's referring to basically that if you're growing outside, you can grow directly in the ground and uh, you can, um, so the you don't have to have a floor necessarily or it doesn't have to be a building. Um, you know, many, many people may argue whether or not it needs a top, but the language specifically says sides. You know, the, sides, well, these, not not roof, not. But these it plants, says sides. These plants so, behind you, though. I mean, it would be, 
Okay, I can see putting in a fence. It's fenced you, in area. You, yes, if you had a, if you had a, let's just say roughly, uh, because you know average, uh, you know person or, or you know person height is, you know, or six foot. You you don't want to you you don't want to go out there and put a, a some some two foot wide two foot high chicken wire, and uh, to keep the rabbits out and expect the cops to say yeah that's an enclosed locked facility because that's not going to fly folks, uh, I can assure you that one. Um, but you, if you have if you're going to put up a fence, build a very secure one, and the law does give other descriptions such as wood lath I believe is the word, and chain link or other fencing material and I think it's a good idea to use as strong of materials as possible and as build it as well as possible that you can make sure it is secured to the ground I think this is an important one uh, especially uh, because in the early days of the uh, prosecutions of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act uh, a gentleman by the name of King in a county on the west side of the state I believe had a enclosed locked facility in the form of a dog kennel but it was not fastened to the ground so the cops could technically lift it up and tip it over you don't want that to occur you don't want the cops going up to your your facility and shaking it and testing it for weaknesses and then trying to suggest that you're outside the law because of this these plants if you're like actually is sitting there amongst them you know, and then I hate to shock the people that he's not actually sitting in the field with all these uh, these plants, but they'd be like eight feet tall, ten feet tall. I mean, they can be tall. so I mean, yeah, you're gonna, you're talking to actually, you'd have to have a, quite a bit of material to fully enclose those to actually meet the letter of the law. I think you would, you would, yeah. you would need to, you would just, you simply need to. And this is a general idea. This is a general philosophy now. Not my, not this is not the exact wording or my I'm not an attorney and not no interpretation here but as a general philosophy you need to have something that is secured and locked and you need to have it so that no one can break in and that unaccessible from outside persons other than the person who is qualified to possess those plants I'm going to give you one more tip on that one, and this is, this is a good tip for everyone out there. Even if you have an outdoor enclosed locked facility, you absolutely should, and this is just my personal advice, you absolutely should put up a sign on your facility, even if it's outdoor, that specifically states that it is an enclosed locked facility and that you are within the legal guidelines of the law. And they have, you, they have various um, uh, posters that you can buy that you can put this. I recommend that you get a weatherproof one or that you laminate it and that you put your, a copy of your photo ID and a copy of your licenses and get them in a sealed waterproof weather you know, container that is visible on the exterior of the facility, not the interior of the facility, the exterior of the facility. So that if you're approached by law enforcement, which they still fly around with helicopters, they still see your stuff, they still may stop by your house, they still may want to check you over real close with a magnifying glass. And you want to make sure that you meet the criteria of the law. If you have any concerns, or questions about that, further questions, detailed questions, contact an attorney. Um, even if you have to pay $250 or more to consult with an attorney. If you're going to do this, it's a good idea, it's a good investment to make. I just, I'm just recommending to you advice, folks. Good luck with that one. Um, back to Hash Bash. <clears throat> And I know I keep veering off the subject here, but you know, Hash Bash is such a, a meaningful event to me personally. And I'll tell you why. Because you have essentially an event that has steadfastly evolved over time and become, and, and it just gets big, it has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger every year. And every year that it gets bigger, and people, more people know about it. And people come from out of state just to go to Hash Bash. 
just to see what it's all about. I mean, it, it, people come from all around just to come there. And over the last uh, five, six years, especially since the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act has passed, Hash Bash has been totally revitalized from what I understand from people telling me that, that have gone prior to... I never went to Hash Bash prior to 2010 because I never had a card, never possessed a, a legal... No one, um, no one that went to the 2009 Hash Bash in April had their card yet. They didn't... We didn't receive our, our first set of cards from the state until, well, it was April 20th. It was 4-20, uh, 2009, that pretty much anybody in the state received their physical hard plastic card license from the state of Michigan, whether you were a caregiver or a patient. And when we received our licenses, you know, hash bash, it was already had already occurred that year 2009 so 2010 was the first year that people were able to go to and attend hash bash who had a physical license to possess marijuana and that was huge that that changed everything in hash bash there was so much we had so much more legal rights um, and protections and defenses under the act uh, to, de to defend us from prosecution at the hash bash so I think more people came together in it. I would say I'd be terrified if I was going down there before, you know, there was a the, the legal avenue. <coughs> I think I'd be terrified to go down there because either they might allow that, it might be just not a nod or wink back then or a small fine in Ann Arbor itself. You know the cops from all the localities in and around Ann Arbor, <laughs> they're rubbing their hands together. Oh, I mean, sure. They're like sharks in the water, waiting to be able to pull somebody, looking for any infraction to pull somebody. I just wonder yes. if anybody actually went back and said, look how many people got pot for this and, you know, other counties that are, you know, or the adjacent, you know, municipalities of Ann Arbor during that time. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, I, that would be just like a feeding frenzy for the uh, it is. for revenue collection. Yeah. It, it is, John, and you you hit the nail on the head with that one, revenue collection. Um let, you know, let me explain, folks, and, you know, I know this, and I understand this on a much deeper, much more involved level, because I, I am involved in politics. I am a, a trustee of a township. I'm one of seven board members that decides on what your tax dollars are spent on. And so you're, you're, it's all about the money, folks. That's what it's all about. And every time a police officer makes an arrest for... Marijuana. The city or township municipality receives the money in fines that you uh, have to pay. You have to, if you have to pay for uh, a vehicle impound or you know jail, whatever the, whatever the case may be. You know you're all up through court, your arraignment, your pre-trial, your trial. Your sentencing, all these things involved, it, it, it's there to pull you and suck you into the system, grab you by the ankles and shake you down for your money. And that's all it's about. And law enforcement, unfortunately, because of the way the laws are written, looks at arrests of marijuana, marijuana-associated arrests, to individuals as being a source of revenue collection. And that's just what John pointed out. And as sad and unfortunate as, as that is, um, it really is uh, the, the reality of the situation. And I, I can tell you that I've witnessed this many, many times, and it's so tragic to see, uh, especially at an event like Hash Bash, when all the students of the campus, normally the students probably would never sit on the lawn of the campus of the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and smoke marijuana openly without fear there. I think most students and most people that would go to Ann Arbor are smart enough to know that. But during the day of Hash Bash, the Saturday of Hash Bash, first of all, it's a, ha it's a Saturday. It's, it's, it's a Hash Bash event. It's a big event. There's thousands of people there. And I think a lot of people, especially young, naive people, um, think, oh, this is the one day of the year I get to get away with this. No, it's not the one day of the year that you get to get away with this. It 
is the one day of the year where you are shaking your fist in open defiance of the government, and that includes the state and the federal, for putting on the people these oppressive laws. And that's what they are. Uh, not only are they oppressive, but they are barbaric in their nature. And I, I can say that because that's what I'm here to talk about. That's what I'm here to discuss with the, with the community and, and, and the people, is that when a law is, is, is that, that destructive, and what I mean is the law itself does more harm than what it's intended to help. So that being said, the law is very barbaric. It is not only socially offensive, but socially corrosive. So that policy, as far as I'm concerned, needs to change. And I think most of the viewers here could agree. Um, but at Hashbash, it's unfortunate to see and, and to witness all these young people, most of them students, many of them friends and, and, and associates, maybe the people that come from all around, maybe they're out of staters or whatever, coming here think it's going to be an okay day, going to be a, a, a beautiful, bright, sunny day of, of open smoking of cannabis, and then all of a sudden, at 419, 20 cops walk through the campus and start grabbing kids by their ankles and dragging them off to the, to the sidewalk where there's a whole patrol van parked on the side where they handcuff you and they load you into the back of the van and they take you all down for fingerprinting, you know, and, and you know, or whatever. I mean, they, they, they can do whatever to you. Once the system has got you, they're going to do whatever they, they can and want to you to deter you from doing what you're doing and to you know, punish you, basically, in a sense, and to tap you for revenue. And that's, uh, that's unfortunate. And I see so many young people. I remember in uh, 2012, I was circulating the petition for the repeal campaign to repeal marijuana prohibition. And I was circulating it amongst the campus students, and there were so many of them smoking. And I said to them all, each one of them, I tried to get them to sign the petition. Whether they did or didn't sign the petition, I said, look, make sure that you are really cautious. There's cops standing right over there. You know what I mean? Be cautious. You know, maybe keep it down or out of sight. Maybe you shouldn't be smoking here on the campus. Move over to the Monroe Street Fair. The cops tend to mess with people less on the Monroe Street Fair. So if you're in and at the Monroe Street Fair, you're much safer than on the campus. I'm not, there's no guarantee you can't be busted there, but, but you're much safer. Point being, it's tragic to see students and young people that I just got done telling, hey, there's a cop over there. You know, look at that group of cops over there. Be cautious. You know, they're probably going to come up in here, you know, a minute before 420 in the day and wait for all you to, to light up. And they're going to nab you. And I just got done telling this one group of kids, just literally got done telling them, and the one kid would not resign the repeal can the repeal, uh prohibition um, ballot initiative and I said why not man like it, it doesn't make any sense not to sign it and he would just brush it off as hogwash whatever man we can do whatever this is hash bash 15 minutes later he was getting drug off this the, right off the campus lawn right by his ankles because he was he wouldn't cooperate so they two or three cops grabbed him drug him over the sidewalk they put their knees in the back of his neck and the head and handcuffed him, picked him up, slammed him against the car, threw him in the back of the car. You know, I, I walked by him, I'm like, I told you so, you know. And it's unfortunate, but that's the way it happens. So if you're going to go to Hash Bash, keep your wits about you, be a little safer, try to be at the safest locations where you see the most number of people smoking on the Monroe Street. Try to stay out of sight, out of mind a little bit. Just use your, use your common sense. Be safe. Play it safe. Go to Hash Bash. Have a lot of fun. But be cautious because marijuana is not legal yet. We'll get there. So, yeah, back to the Diag Hash Bash. Um, oh, well, without further ado, I, I also want to announce the most significant figure that is going to be at Hash Bash this year. This year, for the first time ever in 44 years of, of Hash Bash, will be Tommy Chong. That's right, Tommy Chong, the legend, the original stoner, the man we all love from Cheech and Chong, the writer and director of those movies, 
Very incredible guy. He also went to prison in uh, a few years back for um, selling bongs and smoking materials on the internet as a result of John Ashcroft's uh, Attorney General's um, mission to, uh, you know, more pursuant to the war on drugs. And uh, Tommy Chong was selected as an example. And it cost the American taxpayer $12 million to put Tommy Chong in jail. Just Tommy Chong. That's not anybody else. Just Tommy Chong. It cost the American taxpayer $12 million to put that man in jail. That's just the trial. Okay, that ain't the. That's not including the the the. Uh, uh, that's not including the, the the prison time that he spent there, and the. I think it's close to sixty seventy thousand dollars the average prison inmates uh, we we spend on the average prison inmate. Folks, prison is for really really bad people. Okay, that do horrible things, not people that use and smoke plants. Okay, it's just ridiculous. Um, but un nevertheless. Tommy Chong was released, and ever since Tommy Chong was released a few years back, I believe he was, I'll see if I can find the exact date that he was um, uh, in prison for, but from, he was in prison from 2003 to 2004, so I guess just one year. Uh, but he was, but think about that, I mean, the American taxpayer spent $12 million to trial, to have a trial for a man and, and to put him in, to get him in prison for one year uh, because he sold glass, glass pipes on, on the internet. That's the most uh, ri ridiculous thing in, in the whole world. I mean, if you sold, I mean, it's like selling a glass vase, um, you know, like, if the person wants to use a glass vase to smoke something out of it, that's, that, that's their prerogative. It's just my thoughts on it, folks. No, but the, uh, let's see. So Tommy Chong, folks, Tommy Chong is going to be at Hash Bash, and he is going to give a speech at high noon Saturday, this Saturday at Hash Bash on the Diag at the University of Michigan on the steps of the University of Michigan. Folks, what an event this is going to be. I am so pumped. I'm overwhelmed with excitement and Red Bull. The, also, uh, let's, say, let's, say, let's discuss some other speakers. Oh, other notable appearing uh, speaker roles at Hash Bash, including cultivation guru DJ Short and former Hash Bash frontman Adam Brook. Nationally known Michigan advocates, uh, Rick Thompson, Jamie Lowell, Chuck Green. Oh, and with, with you know, one of my personal favorites, because I'm an elected official, uh, other elected officials, including State Representative Jeff Irwin. And State Representative Jeff Irwin, I believe, gave a speech from Hash Bash the last three years. So that is hugely significant. Imagine that three years ago at Hash Bash, it was the first time ever in Hash Bash history that an elected official, an actual elected official, gave a speech from the steps of Hash Bash. I think that alone is huge. That shows huge progress in the, in the, the side of the movement. When you have elected officials who are not afraid of the stigma associated with cannabis and marijuana, not afraid to stand up and, and be announced and be, you know, f proud that they stand against a policy which Jeff and I agree is barbaric. Uh, and and it's, re it just, it's socially offensive and socially corrosive. It needs, to, it needs to go away. And that policy needs to change. Uh, two years ago, I believe, and or maybe just last year, it was also joined... Um, to the elected officials' ranks, uh, speaking in Hash Bash, was uh, Republican, state Republican Representative Michael Colton. And uh, I want to give a, a shout out and props to Mike Colton uh, for, for having the courage to do that and also being the first Republican uh, elected official 
to support the cannabis movement and to in Michigan and to support uh, and to be a part of and in support of Hash Bash. I think that is alone uh, huge in and of itself. So last year you had oh and in, in addition. Uh, there was the mayor of Ann Arbor. She gave, she was a, it was a woman. She also gave a speech from Hash Bash last year. So last year at Hash Bash, you had three, not one, not two, but three elected officials giving a speech from Hash Bash. Uh, I know I'm, I spoke with my own state rep, uh, my own, excuse me, state senator, uh, Jim Ananich, about uh, coming to the Hash Bash. Uh, I certainly hope that he... Uh, makes a miraculous guest appearance. Uh, I know that he would like to if he could, but he may have other engagements. Um, but uh, if 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 our if if and I say it's mine because he I, it's the 40th district, my district of uh, state rep. If my state rep was went to Hash Bash and gave a speech from the Diag steps, I would be overwhelmed with joy. And I would be so proud and so honored to take my pictures beside that man and to post that on Facebook and show everybody that I'm not just crazy. I'm not <laughs> just crazy. No, that we're not crazy people, that we are rationally thinking minds that believe this policy needs to change. Or at least we need to have the discussion about it. Uh, for many years, John, I, I, I've been irritated that the, that the discussion of marijuana, in general, as policy goes, doesn't even come to the forefront of discussion, and it should. Well, the thing is, there's, a kind of almost, like, of there's almost like a prohibition against actually addressing it as a policy rather than a moral you issue. You got it. And I made a point to, I tried to make a point to a guy the other day, and I don't know if it, you know, sank in, but basically, if you want to change in policy, don't try to go with the moral arguments. I hate to say it, right. because those are going to go on endlessly. And they're irrelevant, really. Well, they're... I can't say irrelevant. I disagree on that part, but... Well, somewhat irrelevant. Somewhat irrelevant. It's, it's you... not scientific. No, but... It's not scientific. It's that's kind of irrelevant to the to the bigger picture. The, the best way to approach it is, with, like, well, for gun rights. John Lott did a great thing when he wrote More Guns, Less Crime, because he showed that more guns on the streets actually was a deterrent to crime and more violence being done and actually they've shown that every place where they've actually allowed more liberalization of people carrying firearms to uh, drop them so basically you got to approach the you made a thing about uh, you know economics right and basically that's basically what the in, in any country basically is is a very large household yep. and that's how the management of affairs have to have to be addressed through that kind of a lens because otherwise you're just going to be rehashing and regurgitating and throwing vomit back on each other, back and forth, sure. with these moral arguments. And I, I, I think morality is an issue. I think how we live is a crucial thing. I think it's probably one of the most, inter, most uh, integral and most, um, uh, most probably crucial thing for us to actually have dialogue in. But when you're talking yes. about what can you do, you see a problem. Where are you going to concentrate your, your uh, resources? If you could see that there is no real need to put it in this area, it could go other areas. Then you're then you're a guy, you're going much further, and they're just sitting there rehashing it, and name calling, and labeling, and all this stuff. Mm. And that's where you got to use the economic uh, basis arguments for policy making rather than the morality issue. I agree 100 percent with you on that one, John. And I I exercise that um, a lot when I when I base my decisions on policy at a local township level. And I really I really lean more on scientific evidence to conclude um, a determination than just hearsay or conjecture or um, you know things of, of, of that nature. Although I do take into consideration you know things that maybe uh, my chief of police has to say uh, or take advice of, of our township attorney uh, at a board decision, uh, I simply do rely on a very common sense approach uh, to any decision making, which I think is very, pro uh, very appropriate and, 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 and needed. Uh, more so ever in, in politics, because I think for many years politics has been corrupted by money. And I hope that I can begin to change the minds and perceptions of people as I begin to further myself in politics. Because I don't want, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it because of the love of it. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to be, I was, I, I was 
just suffering too many abuses of the system and too many abuses of these uh, barbaric laws. And I guess that's what drove me into being um, who I am and, and, and running for public office. But, I, you know, I, I kept to tell people, too, though, the Lord Acton's, you know, he's the one that's credited with saying, you know, a power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. He also says, basically, I, free, I used to use it for a signature in one of my emails when I used to work at U of M. And basically, the, re, the purpose of po political power is power. The po politics is power. It is. And basically, so somebody who was really honest and candid would have, who is in politics say, I want power, but here's how I want to right. use this power. Correct. Because let's face it, that's all this stuff is. That's correct. All this, all this struggle for funding or trying to win the hearts and minds or whatever any kind of politician engages is about obtaining power and yes. using that power. And it is, and it is, John. You, and you make a good, you make a good argument there. I like that. The uh, you're right, John. And I, when I ran for public office, I di I was running to achieve that power, because I, 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 I did not, I no longer wanted to be the person out in the audience, you know, shaking my fist and complaining or coming up to the podium to say my two minute piece. I looked at the people that were running my offices and, and run our government and with all due respect to them, because I, I, I hold them in a, in a, in a, in a presupposed respect because I respect the process of voting and I respect the process of the of the people making a decision regardless of the outcome. I mean, some some outcomes I think are more tragic than others especially when the public remains to be uninformed about issues like they should be. But when it comes to the actual, you know, decision-making powers like you're talking about, I wanted to be that authority and I think that my community recognized that I wanted to use that authority for those for those things of good. In fact, I put medical marijuana on my running platform, and people told me, "Oh, no, that'd be political suicide. Shouldn't do that." I said, "Yeah, maybe ten years ago it would be, but not today." You know, what I mean, the times have changed. Enough people are awakened, and I believe the majority of my community uh, agrees with marijuana policy changing, and also agrees with medical marijuana. I based it on a number of factors, but one is certainly the 63% majority that voted for the act itself in 2008. Certainly that 63% majority translates into my local community. Um, you know, my local community, I, I absolutely believe my local community supports the medical marijuana community by at least 63%, if not more. So you come to the conclusion that I'm, I've been coming to, because I hate politics, I hate politicians, no offense to no, you, I, but it's, it's I, I detest them. But um, yeah, the, I, you, did, I detest certain ones too, you, John, and I detest the system the as, sy as it functions. But the thing and is, I, you if know, you, I, I take the Ron Paul approach, yeah. and I try to get into the system become a part of the party and try to change it because from within. Because other, I think that's the only way to do it. Yeah, that's, that's the only way you can. That's the reason why, like, uh, what a Pericles once said, you know, it's like, you know, don't say you're not interested in politics. Even if you're not interested in politics, politics are interested in you. Yes. You are a resource. They want to be able to tap into you, to I'm use you to their that. own. Yeah, Pericles, I think it was. Pericles. That said that. Yeah, Pericles, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was like, um, I think that's what it was. So I might be misspeaking, about this, but I remember the quote pretty mm -hmm. pretty much accurately. Like but that quote, that's a good one. But it's like, uh, yeah, you, you are a resource. People are resources. Right. And there's somebody out there who's got a vision, and I hate using that term as well, mm -hmm. but they have an idea of what they want to do with you. Right. And what they want to do with what you can have, what you have. Sure. And basically, that's all about forfeiture laws and confiscation of wealth sure. and stuff. Is they want these people, and the thing is, they're doing it, and people are saying, well, they're doing it for our good. Yep. Well, really. See, that's the thing is, most people say, well, it's a politician, it's a cop, or whatever. These people are here to help us. And I've, I've always, even as a child, really questioned that. Mm -hmm. Because of the abuses I saw. You know, in the schools, within the uh, the community. I mean, we had we had a very laughable police department here in this city. I mean, I mean, rife with strong, rife with corruption. Sure. I mean, it was it was. I mean, people say, when did this happen? It's always been here. Yeah. And and it also it's always been here. Like you said, it, and it's also slowly emerged and slowly grown and extended its fingers into every other kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? It, it's 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 like a creeping vine. It, it, it's you know. And if you don't get out the pruning shears and you don't you know, cut it back a little bit, you know what I mean? 
you got to crack that door open and put the light on because basically the you cockroaches, know. everything else, kind of flees the light. Scatter from the they light. Get, they get scattered from the light. That's they don't right. want to be. And that's what that's what I think. There's a very serious analogy for politicians and cockroaches. Yes. They like living in the dark. Yep. They like keep, and they also think of you as mushrooms. They want to keep you in the dark and sure. keep keep you in shit. Yeah, okay. Feed you shit. And keep yeah. in the dark. <laughs> no, I know. No, like uh, you got some good, good points there, John. I we've only got two minutes left, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up. But to kind of wrap up Hash Bash and sum it all up, uh, folks, it's a beautiful event, um, including uh, I'll go through the rest of the names here. Uh, after uh, Jeff Irwin, Mayor Verge Bonero of Lansing. By the way. Verge, Mayor Verge Bonero, you backed into my car. I'm not going to let you live it down. I'm sorry, buddy, but you, you, you weren't paying attention. You backed out of the parking spot, and you, 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 you side impacted me. Okay? Buddy, I love you, but I'm sorry. You're getting called out on it. <laughs> um... <coughs> oh, I can't wait to, for someone when to hear that this. When that happen? We oh, that was like... Uh, Last winter, it was not like it was. So you got to keep that over him, you know. Use that for a oh, I, to, <laughs> a chit in the game, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know I, the 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 damage was minimal, and uh, you know I could have I could have returned it into my insurance claim and all that, I guess. But yeah, I was like, you know what, whatever. Um, I'll just hold it over his head for the rest of his life. <laughs> it's worth that to me. No, but. Um, Ah, it's just one jab from one elected official to another. Anyway, uh, Mayor Verge Bonero of Ann Arbor, or excuse me, of Lansing, Ann Arbor Council Person uh, Sabra Breer, Scientist Dr. Dave Peters, Lawman Sheriff Bill Federspiel of Saginaw County, wow. Attorney Michael Camorn and Attorneys Matt Abel will also be uh, speaking at the event, and uh, as well as uh, a representative from uh, students, uh, students for Sensible Drug Policy. That's a good organization. Folks, that pretty much wraps up the hour of the Genesee County Compassion Club show. If you have a chance to, get out this Saturday, go to Hash Bash, be there before high noon so that you could stand with the rest of us and listen to one of the greatest guitar players ever play the national anthem on the guitar. And stand there with your hand over your chest, over your heart, and proudly, proudly lip sync the national anthem with us and be a part of one of the biggest and most awesome and incredible political movements and days and celebrations and protests of the state of Michigan that has existed here. Please omit the Macarena though, okay? <laughs> Uh, be, go there, be happy, be merry, do the macaroni if you want to. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> t don't forget, Tommy Chong is going to be there himself at the Hash Bash giving a speech from the stage. I'm telling you, get there before high noon. It is so intense, it'll bring a tear to your eye looking at the American flag and feeling the sense of patrioticness that you share with the camaraderie of everyone else there. High noon. Is that a pun High intended? Noon. Is that a pun intended? Absolute okay. pun intended. Okay. And look for there to be plenty of smoke in that crowd too, but be careful. Be cautious. I'm just warning you. And don't forget, uh, Saturday, uh, go one through more, one more time here. Saturday, April 12th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. is the G3C's Adopt a Highway and don't forget the upcoming 6th annual Genesee County Compassion Club 420 Celebration Party. And that is Monday... No. G3C's 5th annual... No, wait. No, I think that's the wrong date. I think they got the wrong date on there. Where's that date at? It's here somewhere. I just it's Monday the, it's Monday the four twenty. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Just checked it up on the calendar here, so it's yeah, it's uh, it's Monday, yep. Yep. Monday the four twenty. Get out to the G three C and experience that. I'm telling you, if there's anything that is probably second best 
to hash bash, it would most certainly have to be the G3C's 420 celebration party. Get out there. Hope to see you there. Everyone, this is Eric Gunnell signing off for the Genesee County Compassion Club show. Have a good one. Be back next week.